It is finally time. We Americans are going to find out very soon if this one thing will unravel the massive multi-year housing bubble that is tearing up the country right now. When the great health crisis of 2020 initially stunned the world, nobody could have guessed what would go on to happen to the housing market right after. Talks of a total collapse gave way to the complete opposite. A major bubble an explosion in prices. Now nearly two years later, the story continues. The new numbers show that housing prices have not stopped growing and inventories have plunged to a record low. On top of all this, interest rates are starting to nosedive once again. This is undoubtedly the most absurd housing market in the history of this country. In today's video, we look to answer how billionaires are moving the market, what this means for future prices, and what you can do about all of this to make some money. And also a big thank you to The Daily Upside, a free business and financial newsletter for sponsoring this video but more on that later we first begin with the fresh reports coming out of the National Association of Realtors it turns out while many were hoping for a dip in prices this winter the opposite has happened existing home sales continued upward increasing 1.9 percent in November inventories are dipping further and the median sales price continues its trajectory straight up according to Zillow the average home price in America right now is three hundred and sixty six thousand dollars they are projecting that by the end of 2022 that number will be four hundred and seventeen thousand now the big question who is driving this affordability crisis well in my opinion that is a two-part answer that involves Jerome Powell billionaires and the American working class the start of this crazy story begins with this the Federal Reserve lowered interest rates down to essentially 0% in order to stimulate an economy that was already in freefall back in March of 2020. Now this had some unintended yet foreseen consequences. Mortgage rates are heavily correlated to the risk-free rate and now lenders could offer customers a 30-year fixed rate mortgage for as low as 2.75%. This made a lot of people jump into the market. In fact, many families began buying second homes. Prices jumped and investors realized a trend. All this money printing was causing serious inflation. Keeping your money in cash or bonds just wasn't worth it. You were literally losing money each year. Real estate was appreciating 20 plus percent and with interest rates at near zero, you can get a lot of leverage to put your money into an asset that will not only beat inflation, but allow you to make a pretty big low risk return. Think of it as the federal government stepping in and subsidizing your investments. Now investors and others began to jump in and join the party, enlarging the crisis. This is also why you're seeing many billionaires begin to sell stocks and buy up real assets. And now is a great opportunity for me to tell you about our sponsor today, The Daily Upside. If you're struggling to find useful and unbiased financial and business news, The Daily Upside might be the solution to your problem. The Daily Upside is a totally free daily email newsletter written by a team of financial professionals with real industry experience. It's becoming the first thing I read every morning as it's informative, entertaining, and not dumbed down. They don't just give a generic take littered with financial jargon. Instead, the Daily Upside sifts through the noise to find the most important news with real analysis. They had a great piece last week on how America's billionaires are cashing out of their stocks like never before. Whether you are a financial professional or just looking for a better source of business news, the Daily Upside will help. It's totally free to sign up and they send you one information-filled email every morning. I can't recommend it enough. Sign up using the link in the description below. With that said, America's billionaires are not just cashing out and keeping their money in savings accounts. They are pushing these piles of cash into hard assets like farms, land, and housing. It was recently reported that Mark Zuckerberg and his wife Priscilla Chan spent $53 million on 600 acres of land on the Hawaiian island of Kauai. Adding to the 700 acres of space in Kauai that they purchased in 2014 for over $100 million. Bill Gates famously owns 242,000 acres of farmland in 19 states, and other billionaires around the world are buying up record amounts of real estate, often in quite rural portions away from city centers. Even hedge funds and big financial institutions are getting into the game. While fears of inflation continue, the push into hard assets grows larger. Here is Cayman Capital Management founder and CIO Kyle Bass explaining the situation and why his investment strategy is focused on real assets like real estate. Oh, so, so that just trumps everything. I mean, did we, so then we overreacted to the Omicron news and maybe to the Chairman Powell as well on the Hill. He seemed to scare a lot of people into thinking that rate hikes and tapering were going to come much faster than people ex had expected. Yeah, they, they may try to do that. Uh, but I think, look, you already see 20-year and 30-year 
our rates inverted. And, and uh, if you go back and reread Bernanke's famous helicopter speech, you'll remember that he said we should avoid the zero lower bound at all costs. And if you do somehow end up at the zero lower bound, you need to you need to uh, uh, leave it as quickly as possible. Well, we clearly didn't didn't uh, uh, follow any of that advice. And my view is that it's it's not the absolute change in rates that matters. It's the percentage change from from where you start. And so I believe the Fed will be able to move rates 50, 75 basis points and the curve will flatten and potentially even invert. And so I think we're stuck with negative real rates for a very long time. And I think that's just a natural consequence of the Fed's largesse. And the stock market over the next few years during that time does what? Yeah, I think if you look at periods of time, whether you're looking at stagflation or whether you're looking at uh, inflationary periods of time, the stocks keep up with about 80% uh, of the, call it, uh, negative real rate uh, effect. Uh, so I think I think that people need to be focused on, more on hard assets and more on hard productive assets and maybe even using some leverage to acquire those assets. So Kyle there makes something simple complex by choosing to use some tough terminology. What he's saying is that the Federal Reserve is stuck. They currently have the interest rate at zero. As long as it's close to zero, the housing market will continue to accelerate upwards. Now there are some people who claim that the feds will raise the rate which will ultimately lead to a crash. But according to Kyle, there is no chance they will allow this to happen. He simply says, sure, Jay Powell could raise the rate 75 points or to 0.75%, but that's as far as they're willing to go before they realize that higher rates are unstable for the economy. Essentially, what he's hinting at is that the Federal Reserve has no choice but to keep the rate at zero or very close to zero. This does mean inflation continues, but it also means that the housing market rages forward. After all, housing and all the things associated with it make up about 18% of the American GDP. Nobody in government is willing to implode that, even if it means high inflation and the slow destruction of the dollar. So what to do? How can you profit off this assumption? Well, it turns out you can get some pretty serious leverage on real estate with very limited collateral. If you have good credit and you're a first-time home buyer, you could potentially qualify for an FHA loan that allows you to put only 3.5% down on the purchase price. Now, this may not seem like a big deal, but here is a real-life example of just how lucrative this can be, even for an average person. My example is found in the suburbs of Cleveland, Ohio. Here's a duplex for sale for $299,000. Let's say you buy it with your FHA loan. And to make it even more realistic, let's assume with closing costs and some fixes, it's gonna run you around 313,000 total. So you take an FHA loan and you put 3.5% down. That total is around $11,000. Think of this as your initial investment. Everything that comes after is all borrowed leverage. Okay, so you rent out the two spaces for a realistic $1,200 each. Your mortgage after PMI, taxes, interest, principal, and insurance is going to be right around $1,750. But remember, you are renting it out for a total of $2,400 a month. Now here's when it becomes almost too good to be true. Let's say you buy it and rent it out for five years. Remember, earlier we said houses went up nearly 20% this year alone, and they are projecting 16% growth in 2022. But for the next five years, let's assume they only go up 10% each year. Okay, fast forward, now it's winter 2026. The duplex you bought is worth $483,000 and you wanna sell it. Let's say you lose 12% by paying your realtor closing costs and freshening the place up. Oh, and don't forget, you gotta pay back the bank for the remaining principal, which should be right around $278,000. After all of that, you are left with a profit of $147,000. But just to make sure and make it even more fair, let's assume you lose $47,000 over the course of those five years to crappy renters, vacancies, and fixing stuff. That's an absurd scenario, but just to showcase how this will work even in the worst scenario, let's include it. In the end, you took $11,000 in cash in 2021 and turned it into $100,000 in 2026. That's a 909% return. Turns out that's a great way to protect yourself against inflation, and if you are smart and willing to put in some extra work, you can make that number significantly better. This is why companies, billionaires, and even normal everyday people are jumping into real estate, which in turn is driving demand 
and pushing prices. In my opinion, we still have a long way to go before prices truly cool off. Of course, nothing is risk-free, and under this scenario, you are still expecting prices to rise 10% every year for the next five. Given recent events, this seems extremely plausible, but as history has showed before, we never know what to expect, and one really bad year could throw off our numbers and turn this dream deal into a nightmare. Regardless, this math is the reason why many are flocking to real estate, which in turn is driving up demand and lowering the supply. All of it was the creation of the Federal Reserve that artificially inflated prices. As always, thank you guys for watching. Please don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button if you enjoyed the video. And make sure you sign up for the Daily Upside using the link I left in the description.